Lobotomy, also called leucotomy, is a surgical procedure that involves severing the connections in the brain's prefrontal cortex. The procedure was formerly used as a therapeutic measure to help grossly disturbed patients with schizophrenia, manic depression, and mania, or bipolar disorder, as well as other mental illnesses. Evidence that the removal of brain tissue could calm patients first emerged in the late 1880s. German physiologist Friedrich Goltz had shown this by performing brain ablations on dogs. Ablation meaning to remove or destroy material by vaporization, chipping, or other erosive processes. These experiments inspired Swiss physician Gottlieb Burkhard, who worked in an asylum, to remove parts of the brain in patients suffering from mental illness. Burkhardt's goal was not to restore the patient to sanity, but to calm them. Of the six patients he experimented on, one died days later and one committed suicide. Decades later, in 1935, two American neuroscientists, Carlisle F. Jacobson and John Fulton, performed similar experiments on chimpanzees. That same year, Portuguese neurophysician Antonio Agas Moniz, who would go on to win the Nobel Prize for his work in the field, again tried a similar procedure on humans. Moniz and his colleague Pedro Almeida Lima drilled two holes into the patient's head and then injected pure ethanol into the brain to destroy the fibres that connected the frontal lobe to other parts of the brain. The frontal lobes were targeted because of their association with behaviour and personality. The operation was considered a success, and Moniz and Lima continued their work. Moniz later created what he'd call a leukotome, designed to disrupt the neuronal fibres connecting the prefrontal cortex and thalamus of the brain. For this procedure, called a leucotomy, surgeons would drill a pair of holes into the skull and push the sharp leukotome into the brain. They would then sweep it from side to side to cut the connections between the frontal lobes and the rest of the brain. The medical community was initially critical of the procedure, but nevertheless, physicians started using it in countries around the world. In 1936, American neurologist Walter J. Freeman II and American neurosurgeon James W. Watts modified the procedure and called it a prefrontal lobotomy. In 1945, Freeman modified the procedure again creating the transorbital lobotomy, also known as an ice pick lobotomy. It was called this because Freeman, who was not a trained surgeon, used an ice pick for the very first procedure. The ice pick was forced through the back of the eye sockets to pierce the thin bone that separates the eye sockets from the frontal lobes, severing connections in the brain. This procedure was designed for those with minor mental disorders, as Freeman felt that it was less invasive than the prefrontal lobotomy. Patients of the transorbital lobotomy were not put under anesthesia. They were instead subdued with electroshock treatments prior to surgery. The procedure itself took around 10 minutes. The media promoted the lobotomy as a miracle cure, showcasing Freeman's success with the procedure. This led to an overwhelming demand for the operation. What was not reported were the negative effects and the unknown long-term side effects. Some died as a result of the procedure, others had seizures, and some were left extremely brain damaged. Patients became less responsive, less self-aware, their self-control was reduced, and they had a poor ability to concentrate. Many were left emotionally blunted and restricted in their intellectual range. The practice gradually fell out of favour in the mid-1950s, partly due to poor results, and partly because of the introduction of the first wave of effective psychiatric drugs. Today, lobotomy is still performed in limited numbers in several countries, often used as a treatment for epilepsy. Now known as NMD, Neurosurgery for Mental Disorder, lobotomies are performed as a last resort to treat obsessive compulsive disorder and severe depression. At the time when lobotomies were most popular, there were no good ways to treat mental illness, particularly for those whose illness made them manic or violent. Insane asylums were notoriously overcrowded and chaotic places with dangerous and poor conditions. Patients with violent tendencies would be kept restrained, put in padded rooms, and given electroshock treatments. This is why the aim of lobotomies was to keep the patient calm, so that they would be more easily dealt with. 
There was never an established scientific basis for lobotomies, and most psychiatrists didn't perform long-term follow-up care for their patients in order to assess its effectiveness. Criticism of lobotomies had always existed, but concern grew along with its popularity. Eventually, this negativity spread to the general media. In 1953, during a meeting of the World Federation of Mental Health, Soviet psychiatrist Dr. Nikolai Ozareski said that lobotomies violate the principles of humanity and change an insane person into an idiot. Some criticism had to do with the relaxed criteria for lobotomies. They were given, oftentimes against their will, to criminals in an attempt to cure them from their desire to commit crimes, to homosexuals as a form of conversion therapy, and even in children as young as six who had behavioural issues. Some battle-fatigued World War II veterans were lobotomized so that they could free up space in the hospitals. When patients couldn't consent to the operation themselves, their family members did so, but sometimes the family member was more interested in getting rid of their problem than actually helping the patient. Although most institutionalized patients at the time were men, the most lobotomized patients were women. By 1942, 75% of the lobotomies that Freeman and Watts performed were on women, 